Love Truth presents the Parent and Family Resource. An Introduction to Divine Truth Basics and Terminology. Eloisa discusses some basic divine truth concepts, truths, principles and terminology that is relevant to the Parent and Family Resource. These will be referred to as Divine Truth Basics. Presented on the 2nd of March 2021 from 8.30am in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Hello, I'm Eloisa. Welcome to the Parenting Resource. I'll be discussing some basics of divine truth. It's important to understand these in order um, before we move forward. And also you can reference back to what I've um, been talking about so that you have at least an intellectual understanding when I refer to various um, terminology and also some basically some basics of God's truth or divine truth. To go to the source of this information, you can go to uh, www.divinetruth.com and there's a link in the, under this video. And that has extensive hours and hours and hours of information in detailing some of the things that I'm going to be covering very, very briefly in these videos. Um, during the videos, we will go into more depth about some of these things, but some of them may require you to, to, to explore further. And I will make suggestions of various links and resources that you can look at in order to understand better what I will be speaking about. Um, also, you may want to explore teachings of divine truth in your own time and yeah, via your own desires. I find there's some very inf interesting information over in the, on their website. And yeah, always learn something new every time I watch it. So, or listen to it. So enjoy. So let's get started. Firstly, we need to look at some divine truth basics. Firstly is God. Now, when I refer to God, I'm not referring to the religious, the way that religion portrays God. I am speaking about God as an entity and as our true parent. So God is the creator of all of the souls in the universe and that kind of make, well, makes us, I suppose you could say, brothers and sisters with every other person in the whole world, which means that though I refer to us earth parents as parents and this is a parenting resource, please take into consideration that God is our real parent. That means that, you know, and when you imagine what God is like, I know there's a lot of distortions about God on the earth and there's a lot of pain and suffering that's happened at the hands of religious orders and various things. And people uh, include, I had such a distorted view of what God was like. And really I kind of substituted my parents and felt like that was like God. And I don't really want a relationship with my parents once I started feeling about some of the things that had happened to me for a period of time. And I was like, oh, I don't know if I really want a relationship with God. But why I so suppose I preempt that is that the society in the world today has quite a complicated relationship with God. And I want to just cover some basics about what I've learned for myself and how I feel about God and also how, um, yeah, what I've, what I've learned and what I'm, what I'm learning about God and what I've also been taught about what God's really like. So God is good. God is absolutely wonderfully good and completely loving. This video will look at some basics of divine truth. We're going to look at, I'm going to talk a bit about God, love and truth, the human soul and God's laws. So firstly, I want to uh, introduce you to God, who is an entity and is our real parent. So that means that every single person on this planet are brothers and sisters. And the children in our care are also our brothers and sisters, if you like, if based on the premise that God is our real parent. Why this is important is that as our real parent, it can help us to look at ourselves rather than sort of being um, the parent of having our real parent God and God is an example of how we can parent children who are in our care. Now, I don't want to be confusing on these videos, so I have, you know, earth parents and the relationship between earth parents and children. I am calling that parenting and I'm calling this a parenting resource because that's the word that we commonly use in society. But I do want to be very clear that God is our true parent 
and that's the true parent of any children who are in our care as well. Why that's important is that um, our role is not as being the all-knowing everything, you know, basically not being a god to our children. That's God's role. That's not our role. And we just need to teach our children or educate or introduce our children to God. Now, I understand that this can be quite confronting for a lot of people. And I know in my own experience, I didn't have a relationship with God, you know, 10 years ago. I wasn't that interested in God. I was interested in changing myself and having a better relationship with my partner and also with the children in my care and things like that. But over time, I have realized that without having a relationship with God, it was much harder to learn about love and it was, um, took a lot more effort in order to um, find out a lot of information. Now, once again, the teaching of divine truth have so much information on these topics and that for me was the main resource that I went to. But a personal relationship with God means that you can have a, literally every child and a whole, you know, all of God's children I'm referring to here. But that means every human on the planet can have a relationship with God and get first-hand information from God directly. To me, that seems like a fast track to change and to bettering my life. So I'm pretty keen on God and I've learned over the years after ex doing some experiments and starting to begin a feeling relationship with God. That's how God communicates with um, her, his, her children. Uh, is that it's via feelings. So it's not like thoughts in your head or words or, or talking. It's always about feelings, which is why we, and all of the things that I'm going to talk about kind of interlink, but we need to develop our emotional self in order. And, and when I say develop our emotional self, God already created that as babies, you know. You can see a baby as emotional all the time. And over a period of time, we get all shut down and closed down as we become adults. And we're no longer open to emotionally expressing ourselves. So it's kind of like a deconstruction as an adult to get back to our emotional self. We're all made emotional. It's the easiest, smoothest way of dealing and living, but we're often desensitized or shut down to our own emotional experience and what we really feel. Now, that's obviously a problem if we want a relationship with God because God communicates via feelings. And if we're desensitized, then we're not going to be sensitive to what God's trying to help us see and tell us. Now, fortunately... God has created a whole framework because God loves all of us so very, very much. And God is so good and kind and loving that God has created an entire framework of laws in the universe so that we always have a feedback system in order that we can learn more about love and truth and all of the um, qualities that God's created for us to learn via, which we'll talk more about um, in coming videos. And I feel quite awed and very overwhelmed sometimes by, by how loving God is and how perfect and precise and how absolutely, uh, I'm trying to look for a word of, just I suppose perfection really, <laughs> and how absolutely, like the precision of God's laws is amazing. And I'm going to talk more about God's laws in a moment, but God's like perfected everything and there's an immediate feedback system if we're sensitive enough to feel it. Often in the world, there's a lot of distractions and a lot of um, addictions and a lot of things that we're doing in order not to feel ourselves and to and feel our own feelings, I should say. I need to be very clear about what I'm saying. And it can create a lot of confusion and we're not always seeing the results of God's feedback system. But if you go through a sensitization process and we become more connected to our own soul, then and we feel more and we experience our emotional selves far more. Um, as a lovely natural result of that, we actually experience and feel others better and our relationship with God, if we would like it, also um, becomes uh, yeah, more attuned. So my aim personally is to have a feeling relationship with God 24-7. At the moment, I have fits and starts. So sometimes I feel more connected to our, our real parent and sometimes I feel disconnected. And there's lots of different reasons for that. But yeah, the discovery and uh, benefits of a relationship with God are just are so great. You know, there's an answer, like God can give us an answer to every single question we have in the universe. Humans can't. God is always consistent in the love that, like God has, wants to love us and give us love and we can receive God's love as a real tangible thing um, and as a feeling that we can receive. But it's us who prevents that love entering us. And we'll talk a lot more about love, love coming up. 
So God does have love to give us and that can actually change our soul. And also to me, it's the fast track. Well, it is the fast track, that is a fact. If you absorb God's love, then you learn more rapidly about how God feels about things and what God sees as loving, not what we humans see as loving. Because a lot of the time we have distorted versions of love and we believe some things are loving that aren't loving. And we be th believe some things that um, you know, aren't loving when they are loving. Um, for example, you know, telling the truth under all circumstances, being honest transparent, and transparent. A lot of people feel that, that you know, truth is hurtful or truth isn't the best way to go about things or you need to withhold truth or you know, people can't handle the truth. All of those are lies um, and they're not true. And from God's perspective, you know, truth is the way to learn more about love. Like We need to be truthful in order to have more love in our lives. So being truthful is a loving act. Yeah, so anyway, I digress a little, but I, I suppose this, there, God is like this vast, massive subject and I don't feel like I can cover um, the qualities of God or God's natural personality in this video. I just want to introduce you to God and the concept of God as a loving being who is your true parent. Um, for far more information and detailed, I do suggest going to the teachings of divine truth. Jesus and Mary have had far more experience and a longer relationship with God than I ever have. And I'm just in my infancy of beginning to grow a relationship with God and get to know God. So um, I'm very excited personally about that process. And I do understand that when you watch these videos, you may not feel the same as me right now. I encourage you to experiment. And I also encourage you to figure out why you don't feel that way. What is it in your life that has caused you to have the beliefs and feelings you do about you know God and where did those come from and what you know what are your what are your true feelings about you know your parent your true parent we will also talk a bit more in future videos about God's purpose and role of having us as say earth parents or parents on earth um, and in a nutshell I feel it's just a beautiful gift God has given us um, in the sense that we have the capacity to have children on the earth and via that we can learn so much about love and I feel like that is one of the like just a beautiful gift and a real privilege to be a parent on earth and I'm very grateful to God for that opportunity. So yeah so if we take the premise that God is our real parent and I again I just encourage you to experiment with that and to yeah if you don't you don't feel that way feel about why not. Now, I've mentioned that God had a framework that's all based on love. So now I want to introduce you to love and truth because these two qualities or, uh, and you know, basics are really, really important and I'll be talking a lot about them in a number of different ways. Love is not this airy-fairy thing, you know, like of all just like all romance novels kind of thing. <laughs> love is very practical, down to earth. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a quality. It's something that you can give as a gift and love is a gift. You can't demand love. You can try, but you're never going to get it. Um, and if you demand love from God, you won't receive it. But if you ask and you have a longing in your heart or you have a prayer for it, and a longing and a prayer are the same thing, which is a real heartfelt desire to receive some of God's love. And I suggest you do that experiment and just keep doing it because God always responds to a pure desire, which I think is a beautiful quality and something that as a parent I'd like to emulate in, with children and anyone in my um in my, who, I, who I know and have relationships with. And God responds to pure desires, so that's a beautiful feedback system. If you have a pure desire, you will receive the thing that you're asking for. If it's a sincere, pure desire from your own, your heart, or, and when I refer to heart, it's not your heart organ, it's, it's your soul, and it's your feeling, but I suppose uh, sometimes I, sometimes I just feel like this heartfelt desire, and it's sort of a, yeah, it's just a feeling, I, I feel. Having a heartfelt desire or a soul-based desire, um, God will always respond to that if it's pure. And that's a lovely thing is sometimes you might ask for things and not get them. And you know, okay, well, something's not quite right with, with my longing or my desire. And this is something I love about God's way or God's process. Uh, that, well, it's not really, it's a way of life that God has created for um, each human to follow. It's so simple and easy and um, it doesn't always feel easy. But is that once you get through certain emotional resistances in yourself, it is the simplest, easiest form to grow and learn stuff in the universe. And if you're open to experimenting and measuring results, 
you'll find a lot of good things happen from, from doing so. So it's the number of things I need to say about love first, and then we'll talk about truth. So love as a concept, you can receive God's love, and that is a beautiful gift that can, you know, you can actually absorb and it will change the nature of your soul, which we'll talk about in a minute, souls. Then there's natural love and divine love. So divine love is the love you receive from God. Only God can give that to you. You can't receive that from another person. No one else can give it to you. It's like me giving my love to you. You can't give my love to you. I am the only one who can give my love to you. And that's what divine love is. God is the only one who can give divine love to each of us as individuals and also to the whole planet and to the creatures that are on it. And God has love coming to the earth all the time. And it's just up to us whether or not we're open enough to receive that. And this is why working through your feelings and becoming open to feeling is so important. And it goes for the interactions and relationships between people. If you're shut down to receiving love, you're not going to be able to receive the love of your brother and sister either. And that or, or and you're not going to be able to give love to your children if, you're, if you have certain beliefs or um, you know, false beliefs really about love. Then there's natural love. Natural love is the, I, I see it as the natural love that we have towards our brother or sister or, and we can develop that on our own efforts. Um, and the fastest way I think to learn about natural love when you don't really, like for me, I was real clueless about love. And when I sat down, it was sort of like this concept that was I didn't know how to explain it. There wasn't really anything practical about it. It was just sort of this concept that I said the word, but I didn't really know what it was. And it's via sort of learning what love wasn't that I'm now feeling and learning what love is. Also, love is when it's a feeling, it's quite hard to describe because it's a feeling. Um, so it's an experience that we need to have in order to fully understand it. But there are certain things that when you have more love in your heart or in your soul, that the certain actions you take automatically and your actions go from being one set of actions, say, f um, for instance, to once you work through certain things and you accept God's love on that issue, your actions and um, physical responses automatically change. And that's, it's interesting because sometimes people, like uh, for a long time I didn't really understand how I'd changed, but when I, when I actually looked back on my life and certain things I used to do in the past, now I don't even think about doing, or my response is completely different, and I don't have to try or think about it. And so it often feels like a natural consequence of just having, um, you know, worked through issues and received more truth or more love on an issue creates you to naturally act in a different way. And that's what's so lovely about this process, I feel, is that you don't have to try, and you don't need to try anymore because you either are loving or you're not loving. And if you're not loving, then it's just a process of working out why and figuring all that stuff out and working through it emotionally. If you are loving, then you're naturally going to act in a loving manner under all circumstances on that particular subject. And you can be loving on one subject and unloving on another. And um, I suppose referring just back to God again, is my aim is to be at one with God, which means to be at one with God's love and understand in my own heart and treat everyone in the whole world and myself as God treats us. And that is, would be a completely loving way to do it. Now, I'm not there yet by any means. I'm just an infant in my process. I feel like I'm in preschool and I'm just learning about all these things in my life and seeing myself as I really am, which is how God sees me. So, yeah, back to natural love. That's, um, you can grow in natural love uh, from your own efforts and that requires, yeah, ethics, I suppose, is the best way to do that. So the golden rule, you may have heard of that, that's treating others as you'd like to be treated. Doesn't mean you treat others as you're being treated necessarily um, or um, how, you know, it, it's about how you'd like to. So, for example, you probably wouldn't want to be hit every day of your life, you know, or you wouldn't want to be hit. So if you then go hitting your children, for example, you're now being unethical because that's, you know, not, not okay in the sense of you wouldn't like it. And love wouldn't hit a child. Love would try and educate a child and figure out the reason for it. The fact that we want to be violent towards another person, particularly a child, is something in us that is a problem in us in the sense that it's out of harmony with love. So when I say it's a problem, I'm specifically speaking that it's not in harmony with the way that God views love. 
And we need to figure out inside ourselves, well, okay, why do we have that desire to do that? And why do we feel like it's even okay to do that? Because when we don't feel it's okay or we don't feel it's ethical to do it, we wouldn't do it. And that's something for us to work through. And you could use any other example on that same um, topic. So I think I now need to talk a bit about the human soul. All of these things kind of interlink. Um, and once I've sort of covered the basics, then we can sort of talk a bit more about them in detail. So another basic of divine truth is that we have a soul. God's created our soul. That was, um, I feel like it's a pretty big gift. And our soul is the real us. It's our desires, our aspirations, our you know, memories, our experiences, our desires, um, beliefs. It's everything. I, I kind of feel like it's like this container that holds everything that's me. It's my personality, my nature. Um, you know, all of those things are, are within my soul. They're, they're, they are. Now, some of those things, like beliefs, for instance, they can change. And sometimes we have false beliefs and sometimes we have, um, you know, loving beliefs. And when I say false beliefs, that means they're out of harmony with love. That's what I'm referring to when I say false beliefs. So you can see how important an education and love is going to be because if you don't know what love does, um, you're not going to know if it's loving or not. Again, God's laws, um, which we'll talk about very shortly, they can help us to find a lot of those things out. And if you have a direct relationship with God, you can find out rapidly. So anyway, we have a soul and then we have a spirit body and a physical body. So I'm going to draw those um, so you can kind of get an image of them in, in, and then we'll discuss them a bit further. Okay, so we were talking about having a soul. Uh, in the Divine Truth teachings, this is how it's portrayed and I'm going to do it in the same manner because then it's consistent with what you see. So that's the only reason it is. I don't think this is really what the soul truly looks like. Um, it's more just to have a figurative concept so we can see what it looks like. So there's our whole soul. And within that soul, there's two expressions of that same soul. Now those expressions might be um, male and female. They might be female and female, or they might be male and male. So I'm just going to represent that here. So these guys are soulmates, if you like, and that will be a term that I'll use in this video, in these videos quite a lot in this resource. As I said, that expression can, so, so what you can see is this is a real us and it's our soul, but there's two expressions of that. So that brings me to, we have a physical body and a spirit body. So the spirit body uh, in, interacts with the spirit world and um, has spiritual senses and all of these different things. Now, we actually, all of us spend quite a lot of time in the spirit world, uh, in our sleep state. And that's a beautiful provision that God has provided for us to actually experience and learn about the spirit world while we're still on earth. So it's not a shock when we get there. And I think that's pretty cool. Now, there's so many things we could talk about about the spirit world, but we'll just, uh, just keep it to the basics right now. And uh, so those of you who might have different beliefs to that, the, the facts of it are is we have a soul, we have a spirit body, and that experience is an interface with the spirit world. So it means that when our physical body dies, we're not really dead and there's a whole life going on. So, you know, for ch in regards to children, if a child miscarries or is aborted, they're not totally gone or dead, they're actually in the spirit world. And I would like to do a whole video on that um, in the future. So we have two expressions. So you can have a male and female expression of that same soul or masculine and feminine uh, expression of the soul. And you can have a more dominantly female expression of the soul. So that would be two female bodies or you can have two a more masculine expression of the soul, and that's two male bodies. So let's draw the, um, we'll draw the soul, which is here, and then the male, uh, the physical, uh, the spirit body and the physical body. So I'm just gonna draw these as a male and a female, because I feel my soulmate is a male, um, but if you, you feel your, uh, you know, you may find that your soulmate is female or that your soulmate is male. So that's our um, physical body. That's our spirit body. Okay. 
and that's our song. Now, you can like test all these things out. For example, you know, like when you, your spirit body is, or, is, or is interacting with, as I said, in a sleep state and with, uh, with the world as well. And sometimes, you know, if you close your eyes and you do that thing and you go up to somebody and you can, you can sort of feel them, there's, you know, your spirit, spirit body is also interfacing with things and sometimes also, and your soul is as well. So often I find on the earth, and I found this with myself, is that I desensitize so much emotionally that I couldn't, wasn't really aware of even my own physical body. And as I have become more sensitive, it's like I can feel things now in myself and in others that 10 years ago I didn't even know existed within me. And that's just been a sensitization process. So for the benefit of this video, for some of the divine truth basics, it's very important to understand that you're a soul and in that soul is all of your desires, you know, your aspirations, your, you know, that's all the things that you really are and the things that are, yeah, contained within you. And that's where, you know, love is stored. So when you receive love, you receive it in your, in your soul. It's not like a physical thing. So a hug, if it, you know, a hug could have a different feeling. The feeling's going to go into you. If that is like a possessive hug, then that's going to go into your soul. So let's, let's maybe draw that. So here's your soul and say there's all these experiences happening around you, um, then all of that's gonna go into your soul. So say you have someone who is really angry at you. So here, let's do them with a big angry. All that goes into your soul and is contained there until you release it. So that means that you need to feel something. And that's why, you know, if someone's angry at you, instead of necessarily getting your anger back, often we're shutting down a lot of sadness we have about being harmed or attacked. And so we need to cry. And if we cry or, or release the feelings, and sometimes we might feel angry or sometimes we might feel afraid. So let's put some fear things. And we might even feel angry. So let's put our anger out there too. We'll do anger and orange. If we let whatever experiences we have, and this is painful or pleasurable, I've just talked about some painful things, but if we let those flow through us, then they're not stored in our soul anymore. And that means that they just flow through us. So a little baby, for instance, they have their feelings, you know, sometimes they're hungry, sometimes they're not, sometimes they're just reflecting their parents. So the parents might be sad or angry or upset, but not feeling that, suppressing their emotions. And the baby will, you can do an experiment if you have a baby, and uh, if you are feeling uncomfortable or something's happening in your life and you're not feeling it and allowing yourself to feel your honest, true feelings about that experience or what's happening, you'll find your baby reacts to it. And babies will just cry and cry and cry. And then when they're done, they're done. And that's them doing this lovely process where they're just letting the feelings throw, flow through them. And you could do it with ple pleasurable things too. You might find something really fun and funny. And you don't want to shut that down. You want to let that flow through you too. Um, in the end, we're 100%, um, uh, the aim is just to be 100% emotional being. That's not a destination. That's a way of living. That's you being you is being 100% emotional all the time. It doesn't mean taking your emotions out on others or blaming others for your emotions. Or, um, and I need to be very clear about that. It's not involving other people in your emotional process. Um, and when I say process, it's really your emotional experience or your expression of your emotions. Often we want commiseration or we, what we, we're afraid about. We have a lot of belief about emotion and we're going to talk extensively about emotion in these um, videos. But often we want to shut down our emotions or we want someone else to give us permission to feel an emotion or we want to get away from an emotion. There's all kinds of tactics we have. We just need to feel it. And when I say responsibly feeling an emotion, that's you feeling your emotion. And most of the time that's on your own. That's not, or with God. That's why a relationship with God is, is such a beautiful benefit because you can have that relationship and God will help you to work through various things if you're, if you're insincere. God won't do it for you. You need to do, take the actions to do it, but God can help you in that process. Whereas people, they can't really help you because they haven't had your experience. They don't truly understand. And most of the time, like sometimes it is beneficial to be honest and truthful about things 
because that can expose and bring up emotion. I'm finding that now it's beneficial to speak with people who know more than me about my own emotional experience and who understand more about love than me and more about truth. It's not very beneficial talking to people who are closed down to emotions or whatever because it doesn't really help in any way and often I'm just wanting to do it for an addictive purpose. To The only reason I feel really to speak about emotions is if you're trying to share with somebody like a, to help educate them on something or it might help them to see something about themselves. But um, yeah, a lot of the time now, not, not so much uh, engaging in like a whole lot of talk about emotion because it's not very helpful uh, because really it's just about feeling it. And if you're not feeling it and you're talking about it, really that's just trying to get away from it. So we've talked about, now I've covered like a number of different things. We've talked about God as an entity and your real parent. We've talked about love and natural love and divine love. So divine love being the love you receive from God and natural love being your, you developing love in your, of your own efforts, if you like. And we spoke about how ethics is a way to begin to learn about love. And basic ethics is learn is basically treating others as you'd like to be treated yourself. We also now have covered the human soul. And so um, as a concept or as a basic truth, there's a human, you have a soul, that's like your, your real use. It's got your desires, your passions, your experiences, your memories. Everything that's part of you is in that soul container. And your soul can develop and grow in love, which I think is pretty cool. Then you have the physical body, which is what interfaces and experiences this wonderful earth and uh, place that God has created. And that is really, I feel like a playground for us to discover and, and learn things about the universe and about God's laws and the way that God, what God's nature and personality is like, and also to learn about our own passions and desires. And then you have a spirit body. And we talked about how the spirit body interfaces with the spirit world and, that's a, and that you've been given this lovely provision in your sleep state. And if you have a desire to remember and you work through certain issues, you'll remember your sleep state experience. And that's a pretty cool, I think, um, uh, yeah, provision that God's created that we can actually go to the, to the sleep state and we can learn a lot about things. So I don't know if anyone takes those power naps, but sometimes you can have a power nap and all these different things happen and you kind of understand a whole lot of things. And I feel like that's sometimes we might be even be having conversations or interactions with other people in the spirit world during that time and we have a lot more clarity about things. So yeah, so if you just think about it as your soul and you could, let's do, you could be um, male and female. Could be male and male. Or it could be female and female. And then we could also have here, let's do this. So we have love that can also enter your soul. And then love makes your soul expand and grow into bigger and bigger and bigger and awesomeness, from what I understand. I can't see my soul yet, so it's not like a visual thing, um, but sometimes I have these, I suppose, uh, images of just like these amazing beautiful beautiful images of what your soul might be doing and sometimes I see things visually like or make things up and have little images of what things might look like and uh, yeah I associate the soul as just like sort of expanding as it receives more of God's love or um, as you become more a more loving person. So now that you have some divine truth basics the next one that I want to cover is God's laws. So as I mentioned, God has made this whole framework for us to exist, exist within. And part of that framework is the earth. Um, but there's many universes from what I understand. I haven't experienced that myself, but I've heard that there's multiple universes that God has created. And there's all kinds of interesting things happening over on those. But this universe, so the one that we live in, um, God has, um, I think actually the laws of love would apply across the board but I'm talking about our earth and, and what we understand. So this is God's laws, basically. Um, they dictate our whole earth experience. So there's physical laws and then there's like laws of love. So for instance, there's a law of gravity. 
That, that's a very loving law. Now, all of God's laws are loving. Every single one is loving because God deals in love and love rules. And I, I find that kind of cool in the sense that anything that is out of harmony with love, anything that is in disharmony with love, eventually will be destroyed and break down because that's the way God's designed the universe so that we learn more about love. So though even, you know, things might seem terrible and horrendous and there's some things that humans are doing on earth that are really, really horrible, but that's humans. It's nothing to do with God. God's created this whole beautiful universe with all of these laws that if we live in harmony with them, then a lot of good, beautiful things can happen. When we live in disharmony with them, then a lot of other things, like there's a lot of uh, penalties upon our soul, if you like. And collectively, as a human race, you know, we're making some very unloving choices and unloving decisions in our world at the moment. And they're causing a lot of pain and suffering for other people, as well as for ourselves. And so these, um, so the laws are, you know, are a really beautiful thing. Often on the earth, because there's so, um, I've found that sometimes it's not always easy to see um, God's laws, like the posit- some, sometimes the positive things that are happening, because there's, everyone around you might be making really negative choices. From what I understand in the spirit world, you're, when there's a loving change in your soul, you actually, your environment also reflects that and changes around you. Now I do, I feel that that actually happens and I've observed that happen in the natural environment uh, on earth as well. It's just that um, I think from my understanding in the spirit world it happens a lot more rapidly and so you see things change a lot more, like you know time is, is, it's not like time on earth, it's different. Um, So everything's sort of much more rapid and you can experience things more rapidly whereas on earth it's a lot slower and you need to be more sensitive in order to see it or feel it, feel it, really. So yeah, there's, there's God's laws. Now in this parenting resource, there's going to be a number of laws that I consistently refer to, and they're laws of love, and all of them are, oh, as I was saying, we have, so for instance, let's look at the physical laws first, so you get an idea of, of a physical law that everyone's probably heard of or understands. That is, there's a law of gravity, which is a lovely, loving law. It keeps us on the earth rather than flying off into space and being like disintegrated. So that's pretty loving provision, <laughs> I feel that we're not born and, and then die immediately. Uh, and then there's a the law of aerodynamics. And aerodynamics means that we actually can fly, like you can have lumps of metal flying in the, in the earth because pe- people have discovered the law of aerodynamics. And that's pretty cool, I reckon. And obviously God's given the birds in, in the world so that we could actually see that there was a law. And that's what people did in the, fir- you know, in the first instance. They went, ah, oh, birds can fly, why can't we? And then they tried to work it out which is one of those wonderful gifts I feel that God's created is that God's already showing us through the natural environment and in the world and all of these things of possibilities that are available to us. And the more that we grow in love, the more possibilities are available. So the physical law of the law of gravity and the aerodynamics, you can see that the lower law is the law of gravity. And then there's the higher law of aerodynamics that supersedes that. That's the same with laws of love. So for example, there's the law of compensation. Now, compensations means that when you sin or you do something that is out of harmony with love, which misses the mark of love from God's perspective, then there's a penalty upon your soul. That's all that sin is. It's not this big, scary thing. It's just like, no, I chose not to be loving. Now I'm sinning. And there's a penalty on your soul for doing that. And depending on the gravity of the sin and how much it impacts others and it hurts other people, because a lot of you know, basically we need to learn about, about loving others. And that's, uh, God takes that very seriously, loving others and ourselves. And every time that we're unloving to a person, whether we know it or not, um, there is a penalty upon our soul. Now, if you're completely ignorant, like you're a tiny child and you do something you don't know, there's going to be a lesser penalty on you, more of a penalty on your parent because they've taught you, taught you those things. Um, but as you grow older, you start making your own decisions and choices. And so then it's more, it's about, that's your choice and your decision and you're using your will to do that. Um, and by your will, I mean what you want to do, like you're actively making a choice to do something. So that's you making that choice. Now it might be based on things that have happened to you in your past, unless you've healed those. So, but that anyway, let's just say you now have made a choice, you're an adult or you're a gr- more of a grown person and you make a choice and it's an unloving choice so it hurts or it harms somebody so you might punch somebody in the face because you're angry and you think they should do what you want 
well, that's not loving, is it? Well, I, I don't feel it is. You might, but I don't. And it's not. Um, you wouldn't punch someone in the face if they didn't do what you wanted. You'd feel about, wow, why do I feel that like they should do what I wanted? Because they can actually have the right to do whatever they want um, from God's perspective. Now, God has provisions that if they do something unloving, you know, they go, let's do an extreme case. If they murdered someone, then there's a penalty on their soul for doing that. But if they chose to love another person by being kind or giving them the gift of love or looking after them with like a pure desire to help them out about something, then you know, they, they will have a reward for doing that, a love-based reward. And, that's, and God, God does that all the time. That's not punishment and reward. It's not. It's never a punishment. It's a correction system to try and help us to be more loving. So, you know, in our school, in Australian schools at the moment, there's a lot of, and in families, like so much, there's like this, if you do the right thing by my, what I'm telling you, I'm going to reward you. If you do the wrong thing by what I think, I'm going to punish you. That's not how God works, and that's not how God's laws work either. God's laws are just saying, hey, these are the parameters. If you, are in, um, if you love, then your life will be smoother. It will be you know, simpler. It will be easier. It, you know, a lot of things will work out, and you won't have as much drama in your life. You know? If you choose not to engage these laws in a loving manner, then you will have a lot of pain and suffering in the end in your life. And I think that we don't understand that. So I was talking about the law of compensation. So when you do something that's out of harmony with love, there's a compensation on your soul. And often you end up feeling bad about things over time. And you go, oh, you know, I don't really like that. Or when I do that, that doesn't feel so good. Now that's just compensation. The higher law is repentance and forgiveness. So if you forgive or you, rep um, you, know, you forgive someone for what has been done to you, or you repent for the things that you have done to others, that's you now engaging your desire and your will actively and saying, no, I'm making a choice to now want to do the loving thing. I want to correct the unloving things that I've done. And that law is a higher law than the compensation. And so it will um, supersede that law. And then you'll get like positive results a lot faster engaging that, um, engaging that law. There's also the law of attraction, which I'm going to talk about a lot. And that is that your soul is attracting events for you to learn more about love. So that brings me to the fact that what you have happening in your life right now is what you want. And that's sometimes confronting for people because they go, I don't want this, I want something. It's like, no, what you have right now is what you want. You can change that and you can have a desire for something different. That's your aspiration. But where you are right now with what you have is what you want and how you want your life to be. So it's very important to see that because then you can start measuring going, wow, why do I want this? What do I get out of being in this situation? So you might even be in an abusive relationship. But I suggest that staying in that kind of relationship, you must get something out of it or you must have some fears of leaving or there has to be something. And for, there'll be so many different things it could be. So I'm not going to say there's not a hard and fast rule. But I know for me, I found that staying in a relationship where there was superior and inferiority, I got certain things out of that relationship. And if you, if there's not one person to blame in, in any relationship dynamic. There's not. Now, it's different for children. I'm talking about adults here. So between adults, there's always things going on for both parties. And both parties have certain you know, things that are happening within themselves that are um, playing out within the relationship. Now, between children, that is different because children come in and you've attracted them as the parents. You then are imposing a lot of beliefs and uh, feelings and, you know, like basically all of your stuff and issues are going on to the children and that's your responsibility. So you have, so when things happen to tiny children, the law of attraction is for the parents is what I learned. And then as they get older and they start making their decisions, you know, then it becomes more about them. Again, though, as parents, we have a certain responsibility that if we did unloving things to our children or we taught them, you know, false beliefs or we taught them untruths, well, they're now acting on those things that we taught them. So we still, I still feel that I have a certain responsibility because, and I'm finding as I've um, learned more about love, I now can see the certain things that I've taught the children in our care that I'm like, well, Nahodan, I need to correct those things. 
Now they're now making their own choices, so they might not choose to take on the correction that I want to do, but I know in my heart that I need to correct those things because I did wrong in that and I need to re-educate and, and demonstrate to them that no, what I taught you was not, not right and, and isn't okay, you know, and it's going to cause you a lot of pain and suffering in the future. Um, I talked briefly like, about imposing things and I suppose now that it's come up, I need to mention it is there's a lot of parents, and including myself, I really want to impose things upon the children. I wanted them to change, or I wanted them to be different, or I wanted them to do certain things. It's never going to work out, and it's a really unloving thing to do for a child. So when I'm speaking about this correction thing, I can't impose the correction on them. I can't force them now to change after I've done the wrong thing. You know, there's a compensation on me that I didn't do the right thing in the first place or I didn't do it even when I'd sometimes heard about what was um, the truth or what was, you know, correct from loving, loving from God's perspective. And so now there's, you know, there's some pain in me about that. And I can work through that so that I won't have that in, in the end and that I'll be doing the loving thing now. But the children now have their own choice whether or not they choose to act on the correction or they keep choosing to act in harmony with the thing that I you know, wrongly taught them in the past. And when I say wrongly, I'm saying, I'm referring to it as wrong because it feels wrong to me because it's out of harmony with love. There's also um, like, I suppose, you know, the law of desire. And desire is something that I will talk a lot about in, these, in this resource. And desire is very, very important. Your desire or your aspiration, they're the same thing. That, um, and I suppose, I need to sort of probably just go talk about will and desire. So. Your will is your current state of what you want and where you are right now. Your desire, your aspiration is sort of your future goal or aspiration. And that can be towards love or it can be a way, like to, not towards love. It can be one or the other. And those things in this resource we'll talk about um, quite a bit of, you know, where your will is at. So what you're doing right now and why you're doing it, what you want and what's happening right now. And then your desire. What's your aspiration? Do you really want to change, for example? Do you really want to actually have a relationship with your, with your partner and, and children in your care? Or do you not? Do you want them to change and for you to be loved? Like, do you have a passionate desire to love others? That's a very, very important question. And that is a very, very important question to resolve within yourself. If you don't have a passionate desire to love others, but you want to be loved yourself, well, you need to look at that. That's a demand then you have upon your environment to be loved. No one has to love you. And that's a truth. It's one that I have struggled with and I'm still working through. But wow, no one has to love you. And the beauty is, is that love is a gift. So that when someone genuinely wants to give you their love, it feels like a gift and it's a beautiful gift. I think it's one of the greatest gifts we can ever receive. And you also have that choice. You have a choice to love or not to love. But if you're not, if you don't want to love, you do need to work out why. And I suggest that Loving is actually a pleasure and it's a joy and it's easy and it gives you so many gifts back. And so when we don't want to love, there's obviously some pain of our past or um, things that have happened to us or beliefs we have about love. And those need to be sorted out. And that's why this resource is being made is to say, well, you know, if you have a go and you do some experiments and you try a lot of these different things, you'll, you'll find a lot of information about yourself um, that maybe you didn't know before. And you can, you then have the choice to work through those things. Um, and in my experience, your life becomes so much simpler, easier, um, more fun. There's more joy in it. There's all kinds of lovely things that occur when you actually begin to live more in harmony with love and truth than when you don't. So yeah, there's just some of the laws that we'll be discussing. There's also the law of cause and effect. So there's a cause, there's a every, for every effect or everything that's happening in your life, there's a cause of why it's happening. That's a very important law to understand. Again, I really do suggest um, that you go and read, uh, not, well, you, there's some reading, reading or viewing or listening to the Divine Truth teachings to gain a full understanding of these laws. Um, yeah, just the more you can understand about them, really, the better, the better. And that's, yeah, some pre-listening and watching that I do suggest that you go to go and actually explore and look at. Those laws are, again, it will just be theory until you start applying it to your own life and experimenting with it. And it's worth doing. Now, we talked about love sort of way back when, and we've been talking about love. It sort of permeates all through the things that we've talked about. 
And there was another one that I mentioned, love and truth. Now, love and truth go together. They just always go together, pretty much. You can't have love without truth. Truth is always loving. Now, we've got to talk about intention and motivation in a minute as well, because sometimes people can be truthful with a really unloving motivation. But it seems to me, are they really being truthful? Because their motivation isn't loving. But we need to talk about truth. There's absolute truth or God's truth. And that is the truth. That's the facts. It's the facts of the universe. And God wants to share all of God's truth with every single one of her children. And that's why this relationship with God, is, I feel, is so important because you can get direct truth from God, which is the source of the information. People can be a bit fickle, unreliable. They have their own interpretation of things. But God's truth is absolute. absolute. Um, it's black and white. It is either the truth or it's not the truth. It's the facts of how things are. And I love that personally. I love, I love the truth. Sometimes I get challenged by the truth and it exposes things in me that are very unloving, um, definitely. But the truth always is like a relief. It brings, for me and in, in my experience, it brings relief. And actually, I think it always does, unless you have sort of some false beliefs about it um, or some corrupt faith about it, meaning that, you know, you don't, you may not feel that way for certain injured reasons within, inside yourself. Anyway, absolute truth is God's truth. It's, you know, you can, you can receive that truth from God directly. Um, God's laws are all based on truth. Uh, yeah, maths is a really good way as well to explore truth because there's always a mathematical formula for everything that God's created in the universe, which I think is pretty cool. A bit blocked to maths personally, but I think it's a pretty cool concept. So then there's absolute truth or God's truth, and then there's personal truth. And that's the facts of what's happened to you in your life. Um, there's, we can be a bit slippery with truth, well, very slippery with truth, because sometimes we want to believe things or say things that aren't really true, because sometimes what we've done or how we feel about what we've done doesn't feel that great, because you know, the law of compensation is working on us and we can see that we've been unethical and doesn't feel so good. And often we judge ourselves and have a whole lot of other techniques we use to get away from certain emotions. Our personal truth is literally what has happened, you know, like it, it did happen to us. So I notice a lot of people um, say, well, that's your truth or that's how you, you know, that's just your feeling. Well, no, some things are true. They're facts. They're not just, you know, um, what I, you know, what I think. It's not like something you're making up. They're really the things that did happen. Now, how I feel about it, those are my feelings. That's my experience, you know. And yeah, there's a, there's a truth to those feelings. Like, wow, no, that's what it felt like. That's the truth. So you could say you have your true feelings and you can have manufactured feelings. And your true feelings, you need to feel and you need to express. I don't suggest taking those out on any other person. I suggest going to your room or to a uh, you know, a place where you're on your own and you just let yourself have whatever feelings you have and be really truthful about them. Don't make them seem more palatable. Don't brush over them. Don't like tone them down. And if you are doing all of those things, figure out why, why you feel uncomfortable with your raw emotional expression, because that is where you need to aim to go if you want to make real change. There's a lovely saying that I heard from Jesus and Mary a long time ago, and that's like, God can work with, you know, honest people. When you're your, your real truthful self, God can work with that. If you're lying to yourself, and I feel that's one of the most, the, the biggest disservice you could do to yourself ever is lying to yourself because it means you can never change. And when I say lying to yourself, that's like your facades you might create. So you might create an image of yourself, an illusion of what you're really like, or you want to present something to the world so that you, for your, really it's for yourself. Um, when you're a very little child, it might be for your parents. But I've found that the reason I maintained facade was because I wanted to believe something about myself, an illusion of myself, a, you know, a surface. It's like facades on buildings. They make it look pretty on the outside, but behind it, it's often not very nice. <laughs> and that's kind of what we're like. <laughs> um, but truth is so important. So as I said, there's God's truth and then there's personal truth. And, and sometimes personal truth isn't how God feels about it. It's not God's truth about a situation, but it is what you feel about it. And you need to feel that. But don't live in it. So I'm going to 
There's a lot of terminology that I will be talk, talking about and one of those things is, you know, feeling something which is, is experiencing an emotional, um, having an emotional experience and releasing that emotion. It flows through you. That's what an emotion is. It's like, I suppose, yeah, it's in motion. It flows. It needs to flow. It's like water, you know, you have a feeling. You need to feel that feeling fully and then once it's done, it will be gone and then you'll move on and there'll be another feeling. And it's like with little children, you can see how, you know, they go from being all happy and laughing one minute to sobbing on the floor the next minute to having a tantrum the next minute and off they go. They're just like flowing through everything until they're shut down and suppressed. And as adults, I'm sad to say that we are severely suppressed in our, our emotional expression and I'm encouraging you to deconstruct all of that suppression to become your real true emotional self again or make you happier and yeah it might challenge you for a while because there's a lot of emotions in us that aren't very nice or palatable or we might not want other people to to see and I just uh, really encourage you to be honest about those emotions and with with God particularly but also you can be honest with them with others. Now there's another couple of things I want to cover, which I feel are very important basic um, truths and things that would help your, you in your um, in this during this resource. One of them is the conscience. That is a mechanism that God has put in place so that you can directly communicate with God. I kind of look at it as the truth channel. It's the way that you can uh, have truth from God immediately on any subject about anything. So you literally can say, "Hey God," and ask a question. You know. God, do you have love for me? Bam, you can ask and, and God can give you an answer via the conscience, but also God gives you a feeling. And if you're open to the feeling, you'll be able to feel, um, feel how God feels about you. And my experience, usually when you, you have you know, questions and answers with God, there's, they're emotion, it's an emotional experience. So if you shut down to your emotions, it's gonna be harder to receive information from God. Now the conscience though, is different to receiving, um, say, inspiration or help from, say, um, other people. And those other people can be physical bodied people so that you can see, like me and you. They can also could be spirits who are giving you information. Um, and, you know, so as we talked about before, you know, you have your soul and you have your spirit body and you have your physical body. Um, people who have died and no longer have a physical body, they're not dead. They're not done and dusted and gone. They're still having a whole life. And some of them have gone to their place in the spirit world and some are still hanging around the earth, influencing you greatly. <laughs> and becoming sensitive to feeling that is a, I found that a really important thing to become sensitive to because uh, there was a lot of things that were happening in my life that I thought were me, which I then realized, oh no, hold on, I'm being influenced in that area. But because, and sometimes those, the feelings are so close to your own that you feel it's you. But as you start to get to know yourself more and you feel yourself more, one of the benefits of doing so is then you can actually feel others better as well. And that's just a process of discovery and exploration that you can go through. But my point was, is that there's the conscience that is a direct channel that you have with God, if you like. It's the direct truth lit channel, uh, which I, I think is a really awesome provision that God gave us, a really lovely gift. And then you can have inspiration from other sources, as I said, people or spirits. And if you think about spirits, just like your friends who have bodies, um, physical bodies. There also there's um, you know a whole variety of people like that. So you have people you know people in the world who are trying to manipulate you, people in the world who might not have your best interests at heart, people in the, in the world who really are sincere and love you a lot, and they they try and help you to to have a better life and to see things in a better way. Um, the same in the spirit world. You have spirit friends. You have a guide and a guardian who are assigned to you you know by God, or you attract. Uh, maybe because of your passions and your desires, then you and your, your, guy, your guardians sort of trying to protect you and look after you and they're often there from when you're very, very young. I feel like you've got a guardian from when you're a very, very, very small person. And then you have a guide and they can guide you in different ways and sometimes your guide might change depending on your, your desires and your passions, um, your soul-based passions. So it's another thing that's in your soul is your passions and desires. Yes, yeah, so we're talking about the conscience. So the conscience is another area that if you're interested in having a direct connection for, to, to gain like direct truth, you need to experiment because again, you need to feel when is it God you know, giving you a, an answer and when is it a spirit? And what I notice a lot of the time is people want to say that God is doing things when actually it's spirits. 
And sometimes God is doing things and some people think it's spirits. Like there's a lot of confusion in people and we need to, I feel we need to work through various things within ourselves so that we, we can become sensitive enough to um, differentiate who's, giving, who's telling us what basically. And sometimes we also are telling ourselves stuff that we want to say <laughs> and saying, oh, I got inspiration from, you know, because it makes it sound like it's, uh, I don't know, different people do it for different reasons. But I, I know some people who do it because it seems to give more kudos rather than them just having that opinion or that thought. There's another um, uh, very helpful tool, if you want to put it, to put it that way, um, and that's prayer. And I briefly mentioned that earlier, I think. And prayer is like a desire or a longing from your heart to have a, a like it's a heartfelt desire or feeling. Um, yeah, longing, I, th I think, is the best way to put it for something. So, for instance, you could do an experiment where you have a prayer to God of like, God, you know, do you love me? The same, same one that you could ask the conscience as well. Or um, how do you feel about me, God? Or God, please, can I have some of your love? And if you have a heartfelt, sincere desire for that, you will receive it. So God always answers a true, pure prayer. And that's a beautiful quality, I think, that a gift God has given us to communicate. Um, and also a uh, quality that I think is lovely to look at as um, earth parents is that God answers any pure desire. And sometimes I look at that with, um, with children and I see that we don't always reward the pure desires in children. We often are punishing them or trying to correct them all the time to get them to be what we want them to be, but we're not always rewarding the wonderful things that they do. And I think that that's um, something that we'll talk more about as well in this resource, um, or it will come up anyway. So we've covered a number of different things now. So we've covered our God as an entity and our real parent. We've covered love and truth and there being God's love um, that you can receive directly from God. And then natural love, which is um, love which is within ourselves and we can develop through via our own efforts. And then we have talked about truth, absolute truth or God's truth, which are the facts of the universe. They're absolute. There's, you know, truth and untruth. They're, they're solid foundations. And then there's personal truth. That's your experiences and what is literally the facts of what's happened to you. Um, as I mentioned, your truth, like personal truth, may not always be in harmony with God's truth. Then we talked about um, the human soul and how you have a soul, and in that is all of your aspirations, your passions, your desires, all of um, your experiences, your feelings, your memories, everything, your nature, your personality, that is your soul. That's a real you. Your soul is the real you. And then you have two, I suppose, interfaces, if you like, one that interfaces with the spirit world and one that in interfaces with the physical world, and that's your spirit body and your physical body. So we looked at those. Here we have your soul and then your um, physical body and your spirit body, your spirit body and your physical body. Then I briefly covered God's laws um, and we just talked about how they're all based on love and how if you sensitize to God's laws and I also want to mention their feedback system. So they're to help you to learn about love and what is loving and what's out of harmony with love. And if we can, like as parents, if you could introduce your, um, if you can make God's laws transparent to children, then they begin to be able to see God's laws in action and actually feel for themselves when they're in harmony and disharmony with God's laws. And I feel that's why God made this beautiful framework and laws so that any person, no matter how old or how young you are, via experimentation and via the loving laws God set in place, we can learn about love and actually grow a relationship and towards God and become a more loving person. Um, the opposite is also true. You can become a less loving person. And God has given us the free will they haven't really talked about free will, we'll talk about that maybe a bit later, um, to make that choice, which is a, a very huge gift um, and a, a beautiful gift actually because it means that we can express ourselves um, freely and we can make choices and decisions. Um, if we don't learn from those choices and decisions, I personally feel that, we're, that uh, yeah, there's a lot of pain and suffering in the world because people want to do things that are in disharmony with love and I do have feelings about that. But I also feel that, yeah, if you want to do things in harmony with love, then there's a lot of um, wonderful opportunities that open up once you, once you start doing that. I also talked about the conscience, which is like your direct uh, truth channel with God, and also about prayer, having a, a sincere longing to God or 
Um, and when you have any sincere longing, it's answered. So even if you don't believe in God, if you have a sincere longing, it will still be answered. And that's the beauty of how God's, or God's laws um, work. You don't have to believe in God for God to, you know, to reward you. The, in the sense of not reward you, but for you to get the benefits of living in harmony with God's laws. God has made loving provision for all of our children, no matter what our beliefs are or what our feelings are or what our circumstances are. And I think that's a pretty beautiful thing. So as a summary of the basics, the divine truth basics that we've covered so far in this video. I'd like to now cover some terminology and just really brief terminology and explain how I'll be using that because it might be a little bit different to some of the things you might have heard in the past or apply slightly differently to what you might have heard. So I've talked about love and truth. And as I said, so terminology wise, very important to understand that there's God's love or divine love. And that is you can receive into your soul from God. Only God can give that to you. No one else can. And yeah, no one else can. And it doesn't come from spirits. It comes only from God. That's divine love. Then there's natural love, and that's a, the love that you can develop in yourself and that you can give to others, and love is a gift, which is a beautiful thing. Uh, love cannot be demanded or expected or taken. It has to come from your desire to give it. So it is such a big gift. Then there's truth. Um, so it's another term that we'll be looking at, look, um, like be using a lot. Now I talk about God's truth or absolute truth or universal truth. Absolute truth, universe truth, God's truth, that is from God. That is the truth, the facts. There's no gray area. It is what literally happened from God's perspective. Then there's personal truth, and that's the um, facts of your life or things that have happened in your life and sort of how you feel about those things, the truth of how you feel, the truth of your experience, the thing you felt as it happened for you. And that is... Um, and there's also personal truth about you, <laughs> which I sort of didn't go into in our, you know, when I was covering the basics, is there's certain things about you that are true. You know, you, you do have a soul, for instance, and you have certain passions and desires. Um, you know, there's certain things, you know, the other things that might not be so, so pleasant, such as you may be really arrogant. You may, you know, be really manipulative. You may have these kind of things, and that's true about you. So learning the truth about yourself is, is a process where you need a lot of humility, which I'm going to talk about next. And you need to be quite honest about your real feelings and your real thoughts and what you're really doing in your life. Um, if you're honest, we talked about that. If you're truthful, honestly, truth makes life so much simpler and so much easier and more enjoyable. But also um, God can work with you much more because God works with the true emotions, what's actually in your soul, not the facade or the fake thing that you present to the world or yourself. So humility, by humility, I'm specifically talking about feeling any emotion or anything that is either painful or pleasurable and having a humility to do it. Now, humility also is a quality to develop in that you to receive feedback or to learn about yourself, you must be humble in order that you must be open enough to the possibility of, okay, well, you know, what, what's, what are God's laws trying to, to help me to see? And the more humility you have, the more willing you are to feel whatever is inside of you and to see yourself as you really are, that's a humble space to be. Then the more you can learn about yourself, the more you can learn about the universe, the more you can receive information from God and your spirit friends and all kinds of things. So being humble, a very important quality. Another important quality and term that I'll be using is faith. Uh, faith, obviously, there's a lot of different you know, versions of faith. In, in these, this resource, faith is meaning your feelings of things in the future that are yet unproved or unseen, but you might have faith in them. So, for instance, you might not know that being truthful is going to be a good thing, and you, but you go, okay, I'm going to now be truthful with every person I meet in my life. You have to have some faith that something good will come from that, else you would never really do it. You must have some faith that something will happen, maybe, you know, that might be slightly positive, or you, might, you have to have some faith that something different will happen, and you like that idea, else you wouldn't do it. 
So, you know, and the same thing with a relationship with God. You've got to have some faith that there's a possibility that maybe it's true. Maybe there's a God. Maybe, maybe it is. Else you won't have a, 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 you won't believe that and you won't act on it. So faith is a very important, important quality. And once you start having faith in this um, way that God has created for us to be, um, you know, God's way, I suppose, uh, you, could, you, uh, you can call it, of, you know, that love is, is the driving force in the universe and that by becoming more loving, your life becomes smoother and simpler and easier and uh, there's a lot of benefits to, to living, living such a life. As your faith grows, and your faith also will grow based on experiences you have as you do your experiments or as you have experiences, and your faith will grow over time. And as your faith becomes bigger, you will then do it more because you know that it works. So at the very beginning, it's almost like you have to have faith in something that's completely unseen, unknown, you're not going to know yet. You've got to have at least some faith of like, all right, I'm going to give it a go and see what happens. Um, and yeah, developing that quality of faith is a very important quality to develop. I kind of feel like I didn't try to develop faith. Faith was a natural result of taking actions and doing things and then measuring the results and looking back and going, oh, hold on, when I did that, that worked really well for me or that. Wow, look what happened when I did that. Yeah, okay, I'm going to do that more. And then my faith grew based on sort of the build up of experiences. But at the very beginning, I didn't know if it was going to work and I had to have, have a go and see if it did. I mentioned action for in this resource, you can listen to it all. You could go and you could listen to all the divine truth, you know, teaching resources. Um, if you don't take any action on it, if you don't try it, if you don't apply it, there'll be no change in your life. And it's that simple. You have to take some kind of action. And that's the reality for any type of change or anything that you do in your life. So, you know, you can take something from as simple as, all right, well, I'd like to lose some weight. Well, you have to take an action to do so. You probably need to, depending on how much you eat, you might need to stop eating as much and you might need to move more. You know, those are two actions that you might need to take. If you want to start a business, you're going to have to do something. You're going to have to actually act in order that the business gets created. It's not just going to magically happen. And that's the same. I feel like the way God's laws work is that you, you take actions and then you, you can learn more. You take actions and then God can give you feedback. And then if you take action on the feedback in a positive, like in a loving direction, then all these other things and opportunities open. If you take action in, a, in, a, you know, in an unloving direction, then all of these other things happen and you still get feedback on that. So God's laws and the whole way that God's designed the universe is like this wonderful feedback system so we can learn more about love. And yeah, on the feedback system, so I suppose we're now gone from action, so you've got to take action, we'll just finish off there. But then there's this lovely feedback system that God has. And if someone knows more about love than you and they understand more about, about something, so it's like I suppose someone knowing more about a subject than you and they really understand that in their heart. So if they understand maths really, really well, then you would be able to learn a lot from them. And the same goes for love. There's people who have experienced a lot of things um, and they understand more about love. So two people who I know in my life who do that are Jesus and Mary, and they freely share information so that everyone can learn more about love and what they've learned about love and, and God and the universe and God's laws and everything over a long period of time. And you can go and look up their resources and see that. Um, now, I find getting feedback in the moment is the most helpful thing that has helped me grow the most people being on it and again it comes back to truth people just being truthful and this is a gift that we can give each other if we want to love one another we will speak openly with one another about things that's how I feel I feel like if you notice something you'll speak up about it you'll, you'll talk about it when you have it but with a feeling of love for the person not a feeling of wanting to harm them or attack them or pull them down in any way so we're on our terminology, that, that's probably a nice way to introduce motivation and intentions. So God's laws also measure our, mo our intentions and our motivations. So if we intend to have, like if we have a loving intention, that's a rewarded just as if we'd acted on it. So you might not, for some reason, you might not get to act on it, but you'd still be rewarded for that intention. If you have an, uh, and the same goes if you have an unloving intention. If you have a feeling inside of you, oh, actually, I intend to, you know, I want to take or harm or hurt somebody, 
Well, that's measured inside of your soul. That's the truth of what you want to do. So you might be saying something all nice, the words, but your feeling is opposite to that. And your feeling is measured, not your words. Um, and this parenting resource, I'll talk a lot about how words are cheap and they don't matter. <laughs> and your feelings, when I say that, they matter to in the extent that they can reflect honestly what's happening inside of you. And that can be helpful for, for others. But often people want to say nice words, but their feeling is often an opposition to the words. And it's the feelings that actually matter. And it's the feelings that are measured by God's laws. And it's the feelings actually that anyone who comes into your um, interaction and orbit is responding to because they're soul to soul interactions. And something I'll talk a lot about in this resource is your soul to soul interaction. It's like you have the word conversation that's coming out of your mouth and you have the soul interaction. Um, for me personally, I'm interested in the soul interaction. What are we really saying to each other? What are we really, what's really happening between us? That's what I want to work out because that's the truth of what's going on. So intentions, that's, you know, what you intend to do, your real feeling, your real desire, your real, um, motiv you know, and then your motivation, what's motivating you? Uh, for example, is love motivating you or is your addictions are motivating you? If your addictions are motivating you, you're not going to be in harmony with love. So then God's laws are going to work, work on that. If you're, and you're, you know, you're, it's not going to ever work out well either. If your motivation is to love, then things will work out a lot, a lot better. So that's into, um, yeah, intention and motivations. So um, then you have desire. Desire is your it's your desire, your aspiration, what you want to do. And our desires can be, you know, sinful desires or in disharmony with love, and they can be in harmony with love. So we might, again, using the, one, the example of love, we may have a desire to love others, and that will motivate us to do certain things. Um, we may have a desire to be loved. That will motivate us to do other things. Now, we might have a desire to get what we want. So that will motivate our actions, that will motivate, you know, what we want to do, that will motivate what, our interactions, all of these kind of things. So desire, and desire is very important because without a desire, no change will happen. It has to come from your heart. So a lot of people could have desires around you and it seem like all kinds of stuff's happening and whatever. But if you don't have that desire and you're not taking action towards your own desire and you're not acting on that thing, you're not going to get the benefits. All the other people who are acting on their desires, they will, but you won't. So, yes, God measures desire a lot. And desire is, I think, one of the most, well, it's, all of these things are so important because they all interlink. But desire, without desire, nothing really happens, you know. You won't, if you don't desire to love, you're not going to. You know, if you don't desire to know somebody, you're not going to. So desire is a very important, important thing. There's even a law of it, so it must be very important. Emotion. I'll talk a lot about emotion. Emotion's really important because we're so, I suppose in our world, most people are very shut down to it. It doesn't mean that we don't have quite, a, there's like some really good information about emotion and a lot of people talk about emotion and the negative results of suppressing emotion and, you know, like there's, there's a lot of literature and studies have been done even of how, you know, working through emotion actually heals disease, working through emotion and childhood trauma helps people to be happier and have a more fulfilled life. Um, working through emotion also you know there's a lot of, of that in they're trying to help people be more emo like let their emotion feel their emotions because when you suppress them um, too much then you know a lot of people commit suicide that's a result of suppression of emotion so it's not like we don't hear about emotion it's not like we don't talk about emotion even there's like emotional intelligence which you know in schools is is supposedly valued the thing is is that we need to, as individuals, get very real about our relationship with emotion. What I notice is that we're fine with certain emotions and with a certain level of emotion. But there are intense emotions within us which are, can be very confronting when you first begin and they can be overwhelming and you can feel like they're never going to end. But they're just feelings. If you experience the emotion and you just let it run its course until it is done, it will be done. And it will, will be done. Like what you won't have that emotion about that thing anymore. Now that doesn't mean 
you'll feel happiness and it'll be done. No, <laughs> I feel like say with those kind of emotions, I think they just grow and develop. And I feel in the world that, well, in the world, it seems to me that there's this sort of emotional level. I'm, I'm going to do a drawing in a minute, but it seems like there's an emotional acceptance point. You're allowed to be this emotional, but any higher than that, not acceptable. Any lower than that, you've got a problem. So there's sort of like this uh, spectrum, if you like, of, of emotional things. And it's very important, I've found, to express and experience my emotional self. That's how I'm beginning to know myself. That's how I'm understanding myself. And I feel that that's actually how we become more logical and more connected with other people is by being ourselves and being our emotional selves. What I also notice is that a lot of people have a lot of fear around emotions or a lot of anger around emotions, which is emotions about emotions. Uh, emotions are the way that God communicates with us. So, and it's the way that we can receive truth. It's the way that we learn about other people. It's the way that we really, like, by actually having a feeling for someone else, it's the way that we express love to another person. It's the way that we, you know, express our desires. It's all emotional. All of it's emotional. So we need to measure what our relationship with emotion is, if you like, and how we feel towards emotions and whether we're really okay with emotion or we're only okay with a little bit of emotion or we're not even okay with a little emotion. And there's a lot of, man, bad press in our society about it and stereotypes and I think terrible beliefs about emotion, you know, like there's, a, a, and even like towards ge different genders, you know, and sometimes, you know, people are dismissed for being too emotional or they're shut down for being emotional. Like a lot of young boys I see, you know, they need to toughen up or, in fact, it happens with girls too, but, you know, or, oh, she's just emotional, so we don't need to listen to her. So all of these negative things, you know, we may have absorbed and have inside of us and those need to be released. They're just beliefs we now hold and have absorbed. And, they, and releasing false beliefs or any belief is, is about us releasing and having an emotional experience to release those. So emotion is going to be a term that we talk about a lot. And I will yeah, explain as much as I can sort of in context as we're going along. So we're talking about emotion, I was talking sort of a spectrum of emotion and how, how we, uh, how in the, on the earth people accept a certain amount of emotion and are uncomfortable with either greater, you know, with sort of too much emotional expression and, or, or often uncomfortable with too less. Often people get medicated and things for doing that. So here we have sort of the line of acceptance, if you like, in the world. So we'll put a little world here. So this is the acceptance line. And if you are like all down here and pretty depressed, people are sort of not okay with that. And if you're way up here, they're not so accepting of that. So really you have this sort of narrow margin where you're allowed. Whereas if you do like <laughs> this, and ironically it's not, I find that um, Depending on a person's uh, emotional openness depends on how, how, how much room to move there is. And really, when it comes down to it, that is a reflection on the person's own relationship with emotions. So if you are afraid of your own emotions, you're not going to be okay with other people feeling their emotions. If you are angry about other people being emotional, you know, if you have different beliefs about emotions, you're going to suppress others and your own emotions. And that's about you. So someone, you might meet someone, I'm quite comfortable with emotions now, but I didn't used to be. And I used to apologize a lot for having my own emotions and feel worried about it and judge them a lot and whatever. And the more I feel and the more I express myself and the more overwhelmed I allow myself to get, you know, the more okay I'm with that. And I also know that as a fact, if I don't release the emotion, like no change happens ever. I can try changing my actions. I can try saying something different. I can try doing something different. I can do all these physical things. None of it works. The only real change that has ever happened in my life is when I've gone through an emotional process. You don't have to know God's truth to know this. You can look at other people. Often people go through really traumatic experiences or, um, you know, a different experience and then they have like a very big emotional experience and they make different decisions in their lives or they take a whole new tract on life or, and you can feel when someone's gone through an emotional process. 
So uh, it's not, it, this is the beautiful thing about God's laws is, I said, like, you don't have to know about things, but it is much easier and it's a faster track if you do understand what's happening in your life. So for me, the teachings of divine truth and why I'm making this resource is that it's just faster, easier. Like, Jesus and Mary have done this before. They understand the process. They're living the process. They're going through it. And in doing so, they're an example of, you know, of, of people who are actually walking the walk, if you like, and talking the talk. And not just talking the talk, they walk the talk. <laughs> they do what they're teaching. And for me personally, that's very inspiring. It's also, I can see the changes in their life and I can see the personal changes that have happened to them over you know, a period of 10 years of knowing them. And I go, wow, hold on, I, I would like to be able to have that in my life or I would like to do that. So then, and also having the external feedback, you know, often people can see things about us that we can't see. And if you have a friend who genuinely like cares about you and loves you, then have the humility to listen when they say things to you because that is a way that you can change and grow and develop very rapidly. Uh, for me, it's been the only way that I've ever grown and uh, is by external feedback. Um, my own efforts without the external feedback, like I'm often just clueless and rolling around in the dark. So yeah, the more sensitive you can become to God's laws, to your own emotions, because that's the way God communicates with you. That's why emotions are so important. And also I kind of feel like a lot of people get quite um, stuck on emotions, you know, like, oh, I've got to feel my emotions, I've got to feel my emotions. Emotions just happen. They're a natural thing that happen. And once you have, have a different relationship with emotion and you're not so worried about your own emotions or the expression of them or feeling them, they're just like a natural result of taking action and learning more about love. It's like they just come up. And if you, um, when I say honor your emotions, I don't mean live in your emotions or value them above all else. It's just like when an emotion is there, let yourself feel it. That's what I mean by honor your emotion. Let yourself be real about it, feel it, you know, experience it. And the more that you let yourself do that, the more, the easier the emotions will, have, will, will flow. So at the beginning of um, my personal, you know, experience, I had to literally stop. So at first I was just so busy. That was a method that I, and I still use it at times to get away from feeling certain things. I was just so busy that I didn't even kind of clock anything was happening. And so what I ended up needing to do is just stop. And so for a period of time, I literally just stopped. I just sat on the floor. I did nothing. And I, when I say that, I just sat on the floor. I wouldn't, and I say, no, you're not getting up until you just on, you know, like acknowledge that you feel whatever I felt. And I'd, and I'd let myself feel it. And at first it was literally an intellectual thing. I just sat down and went, I feel whatever I felt. And then it started that I could start feeling. It's like by giving myself the time and the space to experience those emotions. And I'd spend time lying on my bed or, you know, praying about it or feeling about it, having some quiet, making some quiet time to do that. And then emotions started coming up. And, I'd, I'd, but, and when it came up in the moment, Sometimes I'd remove myself from situations if it, if it works. Sometimes you can't, the, you know, there's things you need. If you've got a previous obligation or, you know, you might be speaking in front of an audience, you can't suddenly like break down into your own emotional stuff. I don't feel like that's very loving. But, you know, you can revisit that afterwards, you know, pray for the opportunity to, to feel whatever comes up. And when, as you change your relationship with emotion, you know, you, you'll become more okay with emotion and you'll notice it's just something that happens in your life. It's part of you. It's, who, it's part of who you are. And uh, to express that is quite lovely. So, you know, it doesn't always, when I say that, it doesn't always feel lovely. You know, you might be really angry for a while. Or you might be very afraid. And that's not going to feel good in the moment. But let yourself experience it. Go through it. And um, in my experience, once you've been through certain emotions, there's a lot of relief that comes from it. And you also feel a lot better afterwards. And that's an indicator or a feedback system that you have worked through um, something or you have released something. As a side note, I suppose, on, on emotion, uh, there is, there is how, sort of like a way to manage your emotions. You can, like, and you can also have deceptive emotions. You can be crying about stuff that's not even happened to you or, you know, thinking that you're being really emotional. So again, truth comes into it and honesty with yourself about measuring results and seeing... Um, yeah, just being honest with yourself about, about what you're really feeling. Because, for instance, you can't feel sorry for something you didn't do. You can only feel sorry or repentant for something you have done. You can't forgive someone 
for something um, that you've, you know, that you've done. You'd have to forgive yourself for what you've done. So, you know, you can, you can forgive another person for what they've done to you, but you say, you know, you can't forgive them for something that you did to them. <laughs> you have to repent for the thing you've done to somebody. But yes, so if you, the more you can work through your beliefs and, um, you know, what your feelings are about emotion, the, and the more you release of your emotion, the more, I suppose, the more you'll just get used to being emotional, so it won't seem like such a big deal anymore. Um, I realise there's a lot of information in this first video. You may want to refer back to it from time to time. And again, I suggest you explore the teachings of divine truth further on their website, which is, there's a link um, in this video as well. Yeah, so terminology-wise, I've covered uh, love and truth, humility, faith, action, um, intentions, motivations, desire, uh, and emotion. And those are terms that I'll be using a lot in these videos. And yeah, if you've got any questions, please ask. Or as I said, uh, the Divine Truth website has a lot of information too. I would like um, these videos I want to stand alone so you know if there are things you're not understanding or you need to be explained maybe in you know context uh, please do let me know I will refine the videos as I go along and as I learn more and also uh, this is my first time in making this parenting resource and so it's like the pilot program so there's going to be things that might change over time and will get refined and uh, tweaked as we go along so anyway, in, these, in the introductory video, we talked a little bit about some of the benefits and a tiny bit about why I'm doing the video. I'll do a whole video on that um, coming up. Then we've covered some basics of divine truth. So some basic fundamental truths and facts, and also some terminology that will be used extensively in this resource. So refer back to this as much as you need and use it as a resource um, as it's intended. And I'll see you in our next, uh, in the next video. Vital in.